Well, good evening to you all, my Victory Through Faith Church family and friends. It's Pastor Jay. As I always do, I speak and I decree the blessing of the Lord over your lives. I pray that all is going well with you. And if it's not in the best situation that you desire, I pray that all will go well for you because the scriptures tell us that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So as long as you love him, even if it's not going real good right now, if we trust God, he's going to make it work out for your good and for your benefit. Well, I'm excited to share the word with you today. Uh, we're going to start with lesson three of our series, our teaching series, Healing Fuel. So before we get started, I want to make sure that we involve the Holy Spirit by going before the Lord in prayer. So, Father God, I thank you for another opportunity to teach your word with accuracy and with simplicity. I yield myself to you right now, Father God, and I pray that as I minister and as I speak, you work through me to cause wisdom and revelation knowledge to flow to us as we fellowship around your word. We make room for you, Holy Spirit. We give you the floor and I ask you to cause wisdom and revelation knowledge to flow to us so that we can not only hear the word, but act on what we hear today and experience change in our lives. So Holy Spirit, we yield right now and we give you the floor to have your way throughout the teaching series today in Jesus name. Amen, amen, amen. Well, let's get into it. As I alluded to, this is lesson three of a series we began a few weeks ago entitled Healing Fuel. And the reason we're talking about healing fuel is because I believe that many, I believe this and I know this to be a fact, that many believers are struggling in the area of health. And that's not a negative statement. That's not a, that's not a bad thing. It's just the reality of what many of us are dealing with. And so I felt pressed, or I felt led by the Spirit to help us energize and re-energize and fill our spirits with what's necessary for us to be able to receive from God what I believe he wants every one of his children to receive, and that's healing, health, and wholeness. So I started this lesson a few weeks ago by sharing with you that in September of 2022, so this was almost two years ago, God spoke to my heart and said, I want my people well, I want God speaking, my people, his children, well, the condition that he wants us to be operating in. And we define well as in good health and free or recovered from illness. So God is saying, I want my people in good health. And if for whatever reason at this point they're not in good health, I want my people to be free from the ailment, free from the issue, free from the sickness they're wrestling with and recover from the illness. And the proof text for that is what Jesus spoke in Mark 16. And I'll read that for you. Verses 17 and 18 of Mark 16, Jesus said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. So you got to qualify. Anything that God promises is conditional. There is a qualifier to every promise from God. So he says, these signs will follow them that believe. So the qualifier is you got to believe. It's not just enough to think it. The qualifier is you have to believe it. So listen to what the word says. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, this is Jesus speaking. In my name, his name means his authority, his strength, his power. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Listen to this. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they, the sick, shall recover. They shall recover. So it's the will of God for his people to be well. And remember what well meant? Free or recovered from illness. So it's God's will that whatever illness, whatever ailment you're dealing with, God wants you to be free from it and to be fully recovered from the issue. Amen. So for part three of Healing Few, let's 
Let's begin with this following statement of truth. I shared it last week, but we didn't go any further than me sharing the statement. So I want to pick up where we left off last week and share with you what uh, I believe the Spirit of God wanted me to communicate. And it is this statement of truth. It is the will. When I say will, I mean the desire. It is the will or the desire of God for those who experience sickness to recover. Now, let me let me be clear. If Jesus said they'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover, that means that Jesus knew that there will be sick people still in the world after he left. OK, so Jesus know Jesus knew even with my death, burial and resurrection, there's still going to be some sick, sick people in the world. So I'm letting you know what my desire is. And understanding God's will gives us the ammunition we need to overcome what comes against us. So he's saying you'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That word recover means to be well and to restore to health. Remember what God said? I want my people well. I want my people to recover. I want my people to be restored to health. So we need to start with the premise, the statement of truth. That it is the will of God for those who experience sickness of any kind to recover. He understands will encounter sickness. And he says, my will for your life is that you recover, hallelujah, from any sickness that you encounter. That's good. The will of God for our lives is that we recover from any sickness we encounter. So don't think that you're out of the will of God if you encounter a sickness. The will of God is that when you encounter the sickness, by faith, you overcome it and recover from the sickness, from the ailment, from the issue, and allow the Spirit of God and the Word of God by faith to restore you to health. It is the will of God for those who experience sickness to recover. Now, let me make a few statements, and then I want to sh share some scripture with you. This is the main purpose of healing fuel is to get some scripture in you, to pump some scripture in, in you so you can build yourself up on your faith. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing the word. So my main purpose is to share some scripture with you so you can hear the word. Faith can come and then you can act on the word you heard and then God will be able to move in your life. So I want to give you three statements to just get you centered on truth before I share the word with you. First statement is this. Remember, we said it's the will of God. It is the desire of God for those who experience sickness to recover. And recover means to be well and to restore to health. So the first statement is this. Sickness and disease. Oh, y'all got to get this. Y'all, you with me? You follow me? Because this is important. Sickness and disease are not part of God's original plan and are not affiliated with the kingdom of God. That's major. That's major. Listen to what I just said. Sickness and disease are not part of God's original plan and they are not affiliated with the kingdom of God. What do you mean by that, Pastor Jay? Well, what I mean by not part of his original plan, when God created humanity, there was no sickness. There was no disease. There were no, no, no issues that man had to overcome. So God's original intent for man was to live in sinless perfection. No sickness, no disease, no stress, no worry, no fear. And as long as we fed from him, we would have and be equipped for whatever we needed to do on earth. Well, when Adam disobeyed, sin and death entered into the earth realm and when sin and death entered into the earth realm, so did sickness and disease. Now, we need to, if it's not a part of his original plan, then that means he's against it. Now, why is this so important? The reason I, I alluded to this a little bit last, this past Sunday, the reason why this is so important is because if you, if you believe that God is behind the sickness or God is behind the disease, or God is allowing it because he's trying to teach you something. That is an inaccurate understanding of your father because it is not part of God's plan for you to be sick. Now, does sickness occur? Yes. Does disease occur? Yes. The main question is, is it part of God's plan? From the onset, from the beginning, it was not. 
and is also not affiliated with the kingdom of God. There is no sickness. There is no disease in heaven. There is no sickness. There is no disease in the kingdom of God. Okay. So we need to first understand that if it's not part of his original plan, and if it's not affiliated with the kingdom of God, then I need to resist it. I need to stand against it. What I cannot do is, is fall back and say, well, if it's God's will, he'll heal me. What did he say? I want my people well. You, you just heard his will. You just heard his will. It is God's will for you as his child to be well, to be in good health and to be free or recover from illness. Now, it's possible to know God's will and yet not experience God's will because God's will is not automatic. Follow me on this, y'all. It is possible to know God's will and yet not personally experience God's will in your life because God's will is not automatic. You have to add faith to what you've heard so what he has declared can manifest in your life. You can trace that, you can, you can trace it back to the very beginning, but one thing that stands out is Abraham. Abraham was living with his father, and Genesis 12 begins by saying that God had told Abraham to get thee from your father and from your kindred to a land that I'll show you, implying that when we pick up in Genesis 12, God had already spoken to Abraham to do a thing, and yet Abraham had not followed through. So just because you understand what God wants you to do and what God desires of you does not mean you're going to automatically do it. Because even after God spoke to Abraham and told him what he wanted him to do, Abraham still allowed his, still followed his father. His father traveled. He was, his father was traveling to Canaan, Canaan, but his father stopped and I was, I was trying to resist it. All right, real quick. Let's go to Genesis 12. Let's go to Genesis 12. Lord knows. <laughs> he knows my heart. He knows I'm trying not to turn that. Okay, Genesis 12. Let's check this out. He was supposed to go to Canaan, but he dwelt in Haran. He stopped in Haran, and Abram was right with him. Okay, so here we go. Now, it says, let's look at Genesis 11.31. 11.31 says, And Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, Lot was Abraham's nephew, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth from and they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go. Now the purpose for them leaving was we're leaving Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the Bible says, in the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Now, it picks up in chapter 12 saying this, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, which means what we're learning about in chapter 12, verse 1, is God letting us know I've already had a conversation with Abram, and at this point of the story, I'm letting y'all know that this ain't the first time he heard from me. So he says, Now the Lord, or the word says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. So God has spoken to Abram to leave his father, leave his kindred and go where he would show him. However, even though Abram heard from God, he failed to fully obey God because Terah, his father, was traveling to Haran and Abram went with his father and stopped or, Well, they were trying to travel to Canaan and they stopped in Haran and because Abram's father stopped in Haran, Abram stopped in Haran with his dad. So that is just one of countless scriptures that let us know that even when you know the will of God, the will of God won't automatically happen in your life. You have to add faith to it. You have to add obedience to it, okay? So when I go back and say that sickness and disease are not part of God's original plan and they are not affiliated with the kingdom of God, that means whatever sickness, whatever issue, whatever ailment you're dealing with, that is not God's plan for your life. Now, I know we, we, we fix it and we, we create narratives to make it more palatable for us. So we say, well, God's going to do this for his glory or God's going to do this to help me to teach other people or whatever. The, we come up with a lot of excuses and reasons why things happen. But if you trace it all the way back to the beginning, sickness and disease were never part of God's plan. 
and they are not affiliated with the kingdom of God. How do you know that, Pastor J? Well, there are many places in the word that tell us that, but I also know that by how, how God functioned on the earth, how the God man, Jesus Christ, functioned when he up. Because the Bible tells us that Jesus is the flawless expression of God. He is the full expression of the Godhead bodily. So whatever Jesus did on earth <coughs> lets us know how God thinks and how God functions. Y'all caught that? Whatever Jesus did on earth lets us know how God thinks and how God functions, okay? So, Jesus Christ stood against sickness and so should we. That's my second statement. First statement was sickness and disease are not part of God's original plan and they are not affiliated with the kingdom of God. My second statement of truth is that, is that Jesus Christ stood against sickness and so should we. So if it was part of God's plan for, the, for him to use sickness as a tool of development, then that means Jesus was operating against the will of God because he went from place to place standing against sickness and disease. And if he did it, so should we. The Bible says, as he is, so are we. We need to imitate him. So if God used sickness as a teaching tool, that means when Jesus walked the earth, he was in direct opposition to God because Jesus went around healing. Okay? So we have to understand that it's not God's will for you to be sick. It's not God's will for you to be struggling with disease or sickness or ailments. Now, I know we deal with things and we have people that we love that are dealing with things and we have people that have transitioned that we're dealing with things. And, and for us to manage it, manage it emotionally, sometimes we come up with narratives that are not not necessarily what God would have said about the situation, and I'll leave it at that. I want you to understand, regardless of our personal experience, God is not using sickness or disease to teach anybody, to teach his children a lesson. And because Jesus Christ stood against sickness, that lets us know how God feels about it. Because if God wanted to tolerate it, Jesus would have never healed anybody. He just would have preached the gospel and tried to convince as many people as possible to receive him as Lord. He never would have healed anybody because if he healed anybody, he would have been fighting against God if God uses sickness to teach us. So the first statement is sickness and disease are not part of God's original plan and they are not affiliated with the kingdom of God. Our second statement is that Jesus Christ stood against sickness and so should we. My third statement, and then we're going to get into the word, is this. Jesus healed everybody that came to him to be made well. You, yes, sir, Sam, yes, ma'am, Pam. Jesus healed everyone that came to him to be made well. There is no record in scripture when Jesus walked the earth in the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in neither one of the gospels, is there a record of somebody coming to heal, coming to Jesus for healing and him not healing them? Everyone that came received healing. There's not a record in the Bible where anybody came to Jesus for healing. He said, no, nah, you can't have that. I ain't doing that for you. It, you need to stay sick. Now, we have the Syrophoenician woman that came and she was asking for someone in her family to be healed. And Jesus said, it's not right to take what's holy and give it to dogs. But what Jesus was saying is, because you are not, because Jesus was sent to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. What Jesus was saying to this lady was, not that I don't want you. Where he was saying, you, you put the, you're, you're a little early because I'm sent to the Jews first. It ain't necessarily time for you to get it. It's coming but it's not necessarily time. Now, when I take the cross and do my finished work, you'll be able to receive it just like anybody else. But because of her faith and because it's God's will for you to be healed, she said, well, yeah, okay, I understand you saying it's not right to give that which is holy to dogs because Gentiles were considered dogs by many Jewish people. And she said, but even dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the children's table. And Jesus said, I can't even argue with you on that. You, you, hey, I can't, hey, as you, according to your faith, it's done. I can't even fuss with you. And even this woman, a Syrophoenician, which means she was not a Jew, she was a Gentile person, she received healing because God has to honor 
faith. All right, so let's look. <laughs> Sickness and diseases are not part of God's original plan, and they are not affiliated with the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ stood against sickness, and so should we. Jesus healed everyone. He didn't, he didn't turn anybody away, so he won't turn you away. Jesus healed everyone that came to him to be made well. Now, I want to show in Matthew chapter 8 and Matthew chapter 9, there are at least nine instances of Jesus healing. And I'm going to go through a few of them for you. I'm going to show you a few of them. Now, if you ever were struggling with whether or not Jesus, God wants you healed, remember the Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. What that means is that if he'll do it for one, he's obligated to do it for all. So if we only had one record of Jesus healing a person while he walked this earth, then he would be held liable to heal everybody. I'm not going to give you just one. I'm going to show you at least nine, about eight or nine instances of Jesus healing. And if he healed anybody, he is obligated to heal everybody. So in Matthew's gospel, chapter eight, look at verses one through three. This is our first instance of healing. And these will be good chapters for you to read and meditate on if you believe in God for healing, just to build yourself up to see if he did it for them, he'll do it for me. Uh, chapter 8, verse 1, it says, When he, Jesus, was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped Jesus, saying, Lord, if thou will, you can make me clean. Now, if God and Jesus were against sickness, he would have said right here, No, I don't want, that's not my will for you to be clean. You need to learn something from the lepers. And furthermore, what kind of sin did you commit to be a leper anyway? It's some out of order in your life. So no, I'm not healing you. You need to go back and get your life straight. Not what Jesus said at all. The leper said, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand, which was forbidden because if somebody was suffering with leprosy, they were you couldn't touch them. They were considered unclean. But when he, oh, that's so good, Holy Ghost. Technically, Jesus never touched him with his physical hand because when Jesus touched him, the anointing was between the power of God was between Jesus hand and the leper's body. So even though Jesus touched the leper, his physical hand never came into contact with the leper because the power of God was between his hand and the leper's body. Glory to God. Oh, so Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will. It's my will. Be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. It is the will of God for you to be healed. The leper said, if you will, if you want to, if it's your will for me to be healed, you can make me clean. Jesus responded by saying, I will. And it is my will for you to be healed. Be thou clean. And immediately, this was a miraculous manifestation because it happened immediately. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. That's just one example. Let's go. Let's go. Verse five, it says, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. He was uh, dealing with paralysis. And Jesus said, look, Jesus would now Jesus could have said, why are you telling me? You go home and handle that. Nope. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. Ooh, praise the Lord. Verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. And then the centurion went into a, a soliloquy about authority, and Jesus realized how great this centurion's faith was. But I want you to see what happened in verse 13. Verse 13, after the centurion said what he said, and Jesus marveled at his faith. Verse 13 says, Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way. Look at this, y'all. As thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. Not as Jesus believes, because Jesus knows what he believes. Jesus says, as you have believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self-same hour. See, it's according to our faith. When you know what God's will is, then we understand it's not about if God wants me healed. It's about will I believe and receive it? Because Jesus said, go your way as you have believed, 
so be it done unto thee. And the Bible shows us that his servant was healed in the same hour. But we're not done. Look at verse 14 and 15. Oh, this is such a great text on healing. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother. So Peter's mother-in-law was laid and sick of a fever. And he, Jesus, touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them. So check out the variety and the diversity of issues that Jesus heals. First, you got what? You got a leper. <laughs> then you got a centurion that has a servant that's dealing with paralysis. And now you got a, a woman, an elderly woman that's dealing with a fever, which tells us there's no scope of there's no scope or degree of illness that Jesus can't handle. Uh, praise the Lord. There's no degree of illness that's too far gone for God. He can handle the small things, even if it's just a fever, a running nose, a cold, a cough. He can handle the large things, paralysis, <laughs> leprosy. And we know if you know your Bible, he can even handle death. The Bible says he touched her. And she arose and ministered unto them. That's not it, though. Let's look at verse 16. When the even was come or when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. Look at this. He cast out the spirits with his words or with his word and healed all. That's a key point. He healed all that were sick. He didn't pick and choose who he would heal. He healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah or Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, which is actually a nod to Isaiah 53 that we call, that we call often when we're believing for a healing to manifest. Now, this is just, we got four examples, almost basically back to back about Jesus healing just in chapter eight alone. But I want to give you, I want this, this healing fuel, right? So, I don't, you know how when you're at the gas station and you're pumping your gas and then it clicks when it's full? Well, theoretically, you, they tell you not to do it because it can damage your, your vehicle. But, but theoretically, there's more that you can put in that tank because the, the nozzle clicks when the vapors run, come back to the, to the nozzle and lets, it, lets the nozzle know that it's full. But if you wait about 30 seconds, those vapors will evaporate and you can put a little more fuel in the tank and then it'll click again to let you know, okay, now I'm full, full, for real, for real. The first click was like, we, we got enough gas in the tank. The second click is, I'm all the way full. I'm trying to get you to that second click. I'm trying to get you to that place to where you're almost overflowing. So let's look at chapter nine. Let's look at some more examples of Jesus healing because if he healed anybody, he's obligated to heal everybody. Um, Matthew chapter nine. Look at verse two. It says, and behold, they brought to Jesus a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed, another paralytic, another person that can't walk. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy. Now, this is so good because we shared we shared last week. If you believe Jesus forgave you, you got to believe that he healed you because the same way he forgave you is the same way he healed you. The same method he used for forgiveness is the same method that he uses for healing. It says, and behold, they brought to him a sick, a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven. <laughs> now, verse three says, and behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemes. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, wherefore take ye evil or think ye evil in your hearts? For which one is easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to say arise and walk? I love this. Verse six, but that you may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, arise, take up thy bed and go into thine house. Glory to God. And the Bible says that he arose and departed to his house. See, if Jesus forgave you, Jesus has healed you. Let's look at verse 20. I got a couple more to show you. Verse 20. Oh, we know this. We've heard this preached many times. Verse 20 says, and behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind Jesus and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, she had some faith in her own spirit. She said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall behold. 
But Jesus turned him about and said, and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Your faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that, from that hour. He didn't say my power, although we know that the release of his power is what brought the healing. But he said, I'm always walking around with power. I always got the power. He said, your faith made me whole, made you whole. And your faith was demonstrated by you coming here and touching me because she said within herself, if I just can touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. So she said it, she believed it, and she received her healing when she acted on it. It's one thing to believe God can heal. You got to get to the place to where you act on what you believe. That's when the healing will flow. We're getting ready to wrap this up in a few minutes, y'all. We're going to go past our 30 minute mark, but I want to show y'all something. I want to show, I've told you I want you on that second click full. Let's look at verse 23. It says, and when Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the minstrels and the people making a noise, he said unto them, give place for the maid is not dead, but sleeps. And they laughed him to scorn. Everybody's not going to understand that you're standing for healing. Some people will laugh at you and say you're crazy. That's all right. Let them laugh. You just keep your faith engaged. Verse 25 says, but when the people were put forth, he went. That means Jesus put them out. He went in and took her by the hand and the maid arose. And the fame hereof went abroad into all the land. So they, people believe this girl was dead. And by all accounts, she was. But death is not a problem for God. And if death ain't a problem for God. Surely the issue that you're standing against is not a problem for him either. Let's look at verse 27. We're getting ready to wrap this up. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him crying and saying, thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him and Jesus saith unto them, believe ye. See, you got to believe. Jesus believing it ain't enough for you. Jesus knows what he can do because he came from the father. We have to believe. Jesus said unto them, believe ye, do you believe that I am able to do this? They said unto him, yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith. You notice the thing? He has to locate your faith. You got to locate your faith. You got to know what you believe. Then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, see that no man knows it. But they, you know, you got, you know, you got to tell it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. And our last instance of healing is verse 35. And this is so important. I want you to catch this. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages. Listen to this. Teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Did y'all catch that? He went about teaching, because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He went about preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing not a few sicknesses and not a few diseases, every sickness and every disease among the people. There's nothing off limits for God. By his stripes, you were healed. Every sickness and every disease. Now, check out why this is so important. Before his death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus, Jesus was limited to healing on a case-by-case, person-by-person basis. In other words, he had to be in the vicinity of the person that needed the, the manifestation of the healing. With the centurion, he was able to speak the word only and the servant was healed, but that's because the centurion had faith and understood authority, so he knew the word alone was enough to heal his, his servant, just like God said. He sent his word and healed and delivered. So before his death, burial, and resurrection, Jesus was limited to healing on a case-by-case, person-by-person basis. Now that he is seated in heaven at the right hand of the Father, healing power is available to all who will believe it and receive it. When he walked the earth, you had to be in the vicinity of Jesus to receive it. That's one of the reasons why he speaks to us and says, hey, greater works than these shall you do because I'm going to my father. But when I get to my father, I'm going to release the power that I operated in so you can use the power that I use to heal the people you come into contact with. I was limited to my vicinity. Your ability to go all throughout the world 
and spread my healing power will, will allow you to do greater works than I ever did. Not in scope, because you can't do greater than raising the dead, but in reach. Hallelujah. Healing power is available to all who will believe and receive it. Mark eleven twenty four 24 and the New Living Translation says, I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Believing we receive is our responsibility. God's got the power. Dun, 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 dun. He's got the power. It's our responsibility to believe it and receive it. Well, Pastor Jay, I want to believe it, but I know some people that was trying to believe it and it didn't work. I know some people that believed it and it got worse. According to your faith, you don't know what their faith was. Just because we say things doesn't mean that we believe everything we say. You don't know what their faith was. And even if their faith was on the level and it still didn't work out for them. Okay, I understand that. We'll ask God for the details when we get to heaven. We're talking about your life. We're talking about your situation. We're talking about our lives, our situations. According, He didn't say according to your mama's faith. He didn't say according to your daddy's faith. He didn't say according to your pastor's faith. He didn't say according to your grandma's faith. He said according to your faith, be it unto you. You have to believe. You have to receive. That God wants you well. And you got to speak that over your life so that you may be enabled to recover. Amen. Well, that's all I got for you today. I pray that you were blessed by what you heard. Remember this. You are empowered by faith. You are equipped for service and your success is in God's word. I love you all. Be blessed. Be healed. Be healthy. Be whole and recover in Jesus name. Love y'all.